Today we're going to talk about sending email through an SMTP server on your WordPress website. The default to send email from your WordPress website is just PHP mail function. And that's very unreliable if you're trying to send email from within the website to people that fill out forms or if, even if you're receiving an email when someone fills out a form or even if it's just a user registration and you want that email to go to that new user. Sending email from the standard WordPress mail function that's there more than likely is going to go to spam or you're not going to get it at all. Um, so setting up an SMTP server to send out email is extremely important. So in this video, we're going to talk about using G Suite to send out emails from the WordPress website. And you can do this with a standard Gmail account. You can also use any other mail service provider, basically. But we use G Suite because it's the most reliable, most secure, and stuff like that. But the next one, that if you're not going to use G Suite or a Gmail account, you want to use something like Microsoft uh, 365. That's probably the next most reliable, secure email platform that there is. Not saying the others are bad, just that these have more attention and more security and and more features all right so let's get started setting up the wordpress to send email through the smtp server all right so i'm going to open a new window but actually i'm going to go into an incognito window now if you don't know how to do that um, you, chrome is the the browser that i use and if you go up to your file menu you can just click new incognito window and that will open an, an incognito window. The reason why I say do it in an incognito window, that way there's nothing caching, no caching and stuff like that that's gonna affect logging into the, oops, logging into the G Suite account um, whenever you set it up, right? So we're going to be setting it up on ideapro.tv. Wow, I always hit X, there we go. So admin, Get into the admin area. All right, so we're going to log in here. All right, so now we're logged into the ideapro.tv admin, and we don't have a plugin yet for the uh, SMTP server. So there's two plugins that we recommend. One is the Gmail SMTP plugin, and the other is Postman SMTP. Now, you can add a new plugin here and do a search for Gmail SMTP. So this is the Gmail SMTP plugin. And I'll also link it in the description. Uh, I'll link both of the plugins in the description of the video here. And this is the one we use sometimes if it's just, we know for sure it's going to be an, a Gmail um, or G Suite email. but we had some issues a couple of years ago with this plugin. We used to use it um, with all of our sites and we had some issues with it about a year ago that we had to switch to Postman until that issue was fixed and we just haven't switched back because Postman is also a good, a good plugin. So if you look for Postman SMTP, so Post SMTP Mailer, this here, is what we're going to be using and it says post smtp aka postman it used to be called postman now they're changing it to post smtp so this is the one we're going to be using again i'll link the their actual website if you just want to download it directly from the website um, or the wordpress repository site i'll link that in the description below so we're just going to install this and then we're going to activate the plugin so it says Postman is not configured and is mimicking out of the box WordPress email delivery. That means we haven't configured it, so it's still going to be sending email from the WordPress default um, PHP mail function. All right. 
So you can either go to settings here or you can go to Postman SMTP and go through here. All right. So it says Postman is not configured. So we're going to go through the steps. Again, we're using G Suite um, to send the email from that. All right. So we're going to start the wizard. It's going to ask for the email address. So for this example, we're going to use demo at ideapro.com. And I can leave my name in there. This is the email address that you will be sending the email from. All right. So we're going to next. Now it's going to look at what the outgoing mail server is. And it's automatically going to find that it's smtp.gmail.com. If this, if it doesn't find it for whatever reason, um, typically email, uh, Gmail, Outlook, stuff like that, it's going to find those automatically. But if you're using mail.yourdomain.com, it's probably not going to find your outgoing mail server host name. So you need to put that in there yourself and you need to go into the settings and your probably your cPanel settings or whatever um, server software you're using to find out what that mail server is. Uh, so for this it's gmail so smtp.gmail.com. So we're going to hit next and now it's going to check the mail server settings to find out what the best settings for your email is going to be. All right, and it with Gmail it does it does a really good job and it automatically pulls that in. Microsoft it does the same thing. Um, some of the other larger email providers it does a really really good job of that. So here we go. So Gmail API SMTP Gmail 587 SMTP Gmail 5465. So this TTL this 587 is definitely what you want to use. Gmail it automatically found that. So password or OAuth 2.0. You want to use OAuth 2.0 and the reason why is because if you use password and it's on an account that you use on a regular basis, if you change that password your website will no longer send out email. So by using OAuth 2.0 basically you're going to grant the permission uh, for this website to send email through that SMTP server on your behalf and if you change the password, it will not affect the website from sending email, right? Because it's going to give it a, a, a secret key, basically. All right. So we're going to leave these settings just like they are and hit next. And so now it says authorized script origin ideapro.tv, authorized redirect URI, and that's here. And then client ID and client secret. Now, this is where you need to go to. Google and do a Gmail um, API key. All right. And sometimes their documentation trying to find where to actually get this information is is kind of a challenge. And they change this on a regular basis. So uh, let's do API guides. Let's do get Gmail API key. And search for that. And sends us right back here to maybe if we click quick start. Here we go. Okay. So the wizard, we're going to open this. And so now we can go back to this quick start and we can close it. So now that we're here, we're going to log in as that account demo at ideapro.com next and it's going to ask us for the password and I have a notes here with my password we have a really strict password policy for idea pro and trust me I'm going to change this password before I post this video so okay all right so now we've logged in and it's enabling the API key so I agree to the terms of service the country of residence please email me updates I do not want updates to this account. Agree and continue. So now it's going to enable the API and do all the stuff. Now it seems like this page is not doing anything because it's just sitting here, but it's actually enabling the API and doing all the stuff. If you look over, there's this little area right here that will be turning. It looks like the page isn't doing anything, but it's actually working in the background. They've done a horrible job, I think, on the usability which 
I love Google products, but some of the usability is, is kind of challenging. All right. So it says the API is enabled. The project has been created and Gmail API has been enabled. Now it's going to give us a default project name. And for most of the time, it's not a problem whenever you have one API key, but some of our accounts like um, on idea pro we have multiple API keys for doing different things and then we it doesn't allow you to create a project name when you're creating the API or the project so you have to go back in later and see what that project is then find the way to change the name so you can change the name that way if you have to change anything on it you know where to go and don't have to go through individual projects to try to find it all right so now we're going to go to the cred credentials here all right so the eight add credentials to your project so we're going to be using the gmail api which is already enabled and where will you be calling the api from so we're going to choose web browser JavaScript. Okay. And then we're going to come down here. What data will you be processing? We're not going to really process any data at all, but I always just say user data just to have something in there that um, that it's going to that's going to process. So what credentials do I need? So now that we're in here, now we can call this idea pro tv wordpress email i think it'll let us do that long of one all right so now the authorized javascript origins this is where we're going to go back to our wordpress admin and we're going to copy this authorized javascript origin here and we're going to paste it in there as you click away from it it'll actually pop up here so then we're going to copy this authorized redirect URI and we're going to paste it down here in the authorized direct URIs and create OAuth client ID. Now it's going to ask us to set up the OAuth 2.0 consent screen. That means if we were using this for other people to connect, when we grant the permissions in a second, I'll show you what, what that screen shows up. But this says, what are we doing, blah, 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 right? So the email address is demo at ideapro.com. The product name shown to users, idea pro TV email is all I'm going to put in there right now. We're going to hit continue. Okay. So now what it's done is it's given us a client ID that we can copy and paste into the site. You can also download this credentials, but we're just gonna say done. And the reason why is because we need more than just the client ID. And that last page doesn't give you the secret. It gives you the client ID, but not the secret. So now it brings us to these credentials here. So if you have multiple um, credentials set up, it'll list them here. But we have just this one, so we're gonna click on this. Now it brings us into here and you see we have up here, we have the client ID. So we're gonna copy that and paste that into the client ID field here. Then we're gonna go back and we're gonna get the client secret. So we're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste that into the client secret here and hit next. Okay, and it says select a notify service to notify you when an email is failed to deliver. So email, pushover or Slack. We're just going to say email even though we're if, if it does fail it's still going to email us it will default to the um, wordpress mail system but i set this up like once a month i go in and make sure that all of our websites send out email and i'll show you how to do that in just a second so we're going to leave it on email and then click next so to finish click save these settings then grant permission send yourself a test email all right so we're gonna hit finish so now what we've done is we've set everything up so now there's this grant permission with Google here so we're gonna click grant permission and it's gonna bring us into this to where we log in to Gmail again so we're gonna click that and then it's gonna say idfpro.tv wants to access your Google account so this is kind of that notification that users would get if we were going to allow this the people to connect from the public but this is not it's not important so we're going to hit allow 
Now it's going to take us back to WordPress admin area and you see the OAuth 2.0 authorization was successful, ready to send email. So now we can um, send a test email here. So we're going to just send it to Josh at Idea Pro next. That's all you got to do and, it, and success. It is sent an email. So we'll click finish. So on a monthly basis, I have a, a calendar date set up that I run through. We have quite a few websites to go through, but I, I, I actually break it up into two different days um, during the month. And so I go through and log into the WordPress email or WordPress admin of each of the accounts. And I just send a test email like that. On a rare occasion, it has lost their permissions to send email. I'm not sure why that happens. Um, it's been very random of when it happens, but I like to go through about once a month and verify that that can still send email. So um, now that if now when you create a form or you create a user, that email that is sent out will now be sent through the SMTP servers of Gmail or G Suite or Microsoft, whatever email platform that you're using. So hope you like this video. Like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.